So I want to take a minute if I can, and I hope you allow me to, take a personal minute for a second because my journey, I guess, and it feels weird to talk about my story, but the way I got to WFN is probably different than most people, than the average person, than probably everyone else in this building. And I don't want to say that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's someone else who's got into this building different than me and or more similar to me, I should say. But I talked about earlier how I was working a desk job back in 2020. And I was right out of school and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And the pandemic hit. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. But I got laid off of two jobs in a span of six months. And growing up, I loved the fan. I loved listening every day. And while some people obviously grew up on Francesa or even Imus, I'm a little younger than that. I didn't grow up on that. I grew up on Boomer and Carton in the morning on the morning show. And that's what I listened to. I was nine years old when they started on the morning show. And that was my favorite show that got me into sports talk. And obviously, if you were listening earlier, my father called in and he was very into sports talk and into podcasts. And he used to call into radio stations, like he said. And that's why I was special that he called in tonight. And he's the one who got me into sports. But I never thought that was an option as a career. I always like to talk. I don't know if you could tell. But I always like to talk. And I had stopped listening to the morning show back in 2017 when Craig left the morning show and it bothered me that he left and I was almost like angry at the show. So I stopped listening. And then during the pandemic, I, something compelled me to start listening again. There was something about live and local about radio that felt like they were going through it with me at the same time. And I really started listening to Boomer and Greg Giannotti Gio every single day. And it felt like I had a reason to get up in the morning because I had, a couple of guys who I wanted to hear, they were going through the same things I was going through. Everyone in New York at the time was going through the same thing. Everyone in the world at the time was going through the same thing. And I fell in love with radio. I fell in love with WFAN again, listening to Boomer and Geo in the morning. And then when they announced that Craig was coming back, I was extremely excited. And one of his first shows, he said, hey, I'm a changed person and I want to prove it. Here's my email address. Email me and tell me Whatever you want to tell me, I want to prove I want to win over the fans back. So I took that email address, and I didn't think he'd respond, but I emailed Craig Carton, and I said, hey, I'm a longtime fan, and I've always wanted to get into this industry. I just don't know how. I think I'd be really good at it if I tried, but I don't know what the first step is. And Craig Carton emailed me back like two hours later. I was shocked that he responded, but it's actually him. And he emailed me back, and he was like, listen, man, you'll never regret taking a chance to be great at something you love. If you think that you're going to be really good at this and this is your passion, go for it. Find a job. Find a way in. So I started a podcast, and I applied to a job at Odyssey. At the time, it was still Entercom, and I applied to the job, a sales job. That's what I had experience in, so I figured I'd apply to a sales job. At the time, I was living in Baltimore to be closer to my parents during the pandemic. A lot of people wanted to be closer to family, so I moved down to Baltimore where my parents lived, and I applied to a sales job down there. And it took a while, but Kevin Friedman, who was my sales manager down there and someone who's been a mentor to me and continues to be a mentor to me, who I talk to often, he hired me, he gave me the sales job, but I was still in sales. So I was in the industry, but I felt like I was adjacent to the industry. I was selling radio and t radio ads pretty much for the, ra for the Ravens and the Orioles, but I was, it was sales. And at the first Pete Alonso comedy event, I think that was... January or February of 2022, I want to say. I wanted to come to New York to go to the show and meet Craig and thank him for really, at that point, I thought was changing my career for pointing me in the right direction. I was, I was had my podcast. I was really happy. And I was working in the industry, working sales in Baltimore. So I came to New York to meet Craig Carton. And I met him at the event, and he couldn't have been nicer. But once I was there at the meet and greet, Spike Eskin was there who's currently my boss. Um, not for much longer, but he's currently my boss. And I went to Spike and I said, hey, I, I work in the industry. I'm in sales in Baltimore. I'm young. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to grow. I eventually want to be on air. And Spike said to me, you know what they're not going to say? They're not going to be like, you know who's really good? That kid in sales. Let's give him a shot to be on air. He's like, they're not going to say that. So what you have to do is you have to get to the on-air side. 
start by cutting tape, learning how to cut tape. Now, I didn't go to school for this, nothing. I, wasn't in com I didn't have a communications degree in college. All I had was a podcast and a sales job at Odyssey. And Spike's like, the best, the only way you can do it is start from the bottom and work your way up. So I started working overnights in Baltimore. And in Baltimore, we stream CBS Sports Network during the overnights. We don't even have live shows. So I'm the only one in this building at the radio station during the overnights in Baltimore. And I'm cutting tape. And I started there and I worked my way up slowly. And I got to the point where I was producing live shows, then doing the sports updates, doing traffic reports. I said yes to everything. And eventually after a year, the opportunity was right. And I reached back out to Spike Eskin and my boss down there, Chuck Sapienza, who, by the way, funny story. When Chuck first hired me to be on, he's like, I know you're a sales guy. You like to talk a lot. Salespeople like to talk a lot. You'll be successful at this job on the on-air side if you don't talk. Your job is to shut up and make the hosts better. So whether that's giving them information before the show, running a tight board, whatever it is, your job is to not talk. Don't turn your mic on. Don't get in their ear too much. Your job is to be quiet. And I did that. I listened to him. I spoke if spoken to. But now I'm here and I'm getting paid to talk. So it's worked out pretty well for me. And I went to him and I said, he, you know, I want the opportunity to go to New York. I grew up listening to the fan. I love WFAN. And he reached out to Spike and I reached out to Spike. And Spike gave me this opportunity to come here. I've done some really fun things. Getting to talk on some of the shows, work on some of the shows from the midday show I've gotten to work on. I've gotten to work the digital side for the morning show, producing a bunch of the weekend shows here. I got to produce Yankees baseball and hear John Sterling say studio operations by Rami Lavi and then meet him ultimately at the stadium last year. And so many cool opportunities, including this sitting in this chair, being on air. And there's so many people that I have to thank. And Craig Carton's one of them. That first email probably changed my life. I don't chase this if I, he never reaches back out to me when I sent that email to him. And Spike Eskin, who took the chance on me then and took the chance on me now to give me this opportunity. So I hope it's the first of many. I hope it's not the last. He gave me some sound advice. He said, essentially, don't mess it up, but he didn't say mess. <laughs> so that was the advice Spike gave me for this show. Uh, but hopefully I get more opportunities. But what I wanted to say to you right now, the listener, if you're listening to this, and maybe you're thinking about whatever it is, a career, a job, a relationship, whatever it might be, don't regret, don't live with that regret of not going for it, of not making the most of it. If you think you're going to be great at something, go make the most of that opportunity. Go take that opportunity. Go find a way to, ma to make it happen for yourself. You'll, you won't regret taking a chance to be great at something you love. That's what Craig told me. And that's why I'm here. And I don't even think he knows that. Like, we've only met a few times. Even here, when we worked together, the short time that we overlapped, he doesn't know who I am. But that email that he sent me, in my opinion, certainly changed my life. And then everything that's happened since then. So I'm telling you, if you're listening right now, this is your sign. Go be great at something that you think you are great at. Let's get back to the phones and back to the sports talk. And I appreciate you indulging me with that quick minute. We have... A couple of minutes before the update, so let's get back 